Well, thank the Lord for his blessings this day. Uh, we're coming to you this morning by way of uh, recording and uploading. Um, we're working on a few things that w uh, Rachel is for the live stream. So till those things are in place, uh, we're doing this earlier today. And of course, I'm doing it uh, once again from the desk due to the adverse weather conditions. You know, we face a few uh, challenges out here in the, in the countryside. Uh, that uh, churches that draw their membership from one town don't have to endure. So uh, we just thank the Lord for your patience there and prayerfully by next Sunday, I think the weather's supposed to moderate and hopefully we can kind of get back on our uh, accustomed schedule. So uh, it, just a prayer for these things and for all the body of Christ and all to meet all our needs. Let's just bow our heads just for a moment here. Father, we do thank you that we can come into your presence with joy and with singing, with gladness of heart. Lord, just put the oil of gladness within the heart of each and every believer. And Father, for those that have needs, Lord, you're a meter of needs. So Father, for those that have sicknesses, illnesses, the things to be gotten through in Jesus' name, we pray that they will do so by faith according to the name of Jesus in which we trust. Amen and amen. So as we thank the Lord for the gift of life and we put all our hope in things eternal that proceed from the throne of grace, we thank him also for the liberty given from above to worship him in spirit and in truth because God is a spirit and uh, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The, and God being the very essence of pure thought that was there before something came out of nothing. That is nothing of physical substance. Because as we know it, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, that most astounding of scriptures, you know, Hebrews 11 is, is so famous to us as the heroes of faith chapter. And, and uh, we uh, quote from Hebrews 11 often, uh, but it nestled right amongst the, those scriptures and right in the, the beginning of those things that lead us to those f great faith examples. Hebrews 11.3 delivers this precept. It tells us that this existence that we live came by thought and it came by speech. It's just, a, it's the most amazing thing that 2,000 years ago, uh, the inspiration imparted to the saints of old and to the, the prophets and pastors and evangelists by which uh, the word of God was written, that such a thought would come into being. And of course, there are foundation scriptures in the Old Testament uh, that are from the beginning that lead us to these very conclusions. But it's just such an astounding book in its beauty and its truth. And before time began, uh, there most certainly was something, but it had no beginning as we know it, had no characteristics that are present in either space or time, but it was there. And it was able to cause things to happen. And namely, it was God. And the word, and spoken and expressed, that living thought, that was with God, and the word was God. In a book of uh, astounding statements, well, those first five verses of St. John chapter 1, they just ring out to us. And uh, we behold their beauty, these apples of gold and pictures of silver that we draw from. So uh, given these facts and given these miraculous statements and given all these good and great and precious promises, what do we do uh, with all this information that we're given, with all these facts? Well, we have to choose. We have to choose our manner to deal with them. So our subject title for today is Choose This Day. Choose This Day in the matter of our own choices and the things that we wrestle with constantly in this world. You have the right to choose your own destiny and discover the course of your spiritual pathway. And many realize this in, in uh, general terms, but not as many comprehend that that is a privilege, which is a gift from the almighty God. As the most high determined that his word must be chosen by one's will in order to make it of full effect and making sure that the preaching thereof has free course to move amongst us, that the Holy Spirit has a freedom within all these choices. And by this living way, well, that's how we enter in. It's how we'll enter into the city where the gates are open in the daytime and there is no night. 
It's how we uh, approach the living God by this living way we enter in. And the living God thought on all this before his spirit moved upon the face of the waters. When all was as yet darkness and void. So then, that being the case, all that we live within is put in place by design, by conscious living thought. And uh, thus we're gifted by the right of choice. And it's a very precious gift. It's to be valued very highly and, and certainly not to be taken for granted. Uh, just as life itself is. Life is a gift from God. It's not to be taken uh, for granted. And, and we must not forget that fact. So the, the Lord's favorite attitude concerning these things is gratitude. He's given us much. So he asks for worship in return, which is his divine way to communicate with our spirits. And he does not ask so much in return. Just the reasonable gratitude by worship, which will produce a unity of being in the end. And God's spirit, he pulled us out of the darkness of non-existence, and now there is life. Whereas before time began, there was only God's wisdom there. Uh, that was his companion before uh, the angelic creation, before uh, the creation of humankind. And God's companion which shows in Proverbs chapter 8, most notably there in uh, verse 30, but all the surrounding scriptures. Uh, through those things, the Almighty God, he made a choice thereby. He chose to bring forth life, and he came to conclude that only through the proliferation of life itself could he find fulfillment of his divine nature. In the wisdom that was there before uh, time began, God decided our course that we would be created in his image, we'd have freedom of thought, we'd have ability uh, to choose and discern uh, various uh, issues and thus uh, mature within ourselves and, and bring forth our life after a, a manner of choice. So God created us in, in his image to be able to do those things. And then the physical creation, well, he brought it all about. He created and now it's real. We are here as evidence of that. And we are here as evidence of what had been conceived in the beginning. And by this fact that God chose life, well, uh, thus we have uh, our being. And only by way of free will of individual volition could there be a relationship established where the Creator and the created ones could walk together in the unity of a father and son type relationship or that of a father and a daughter or of bride and bridegroom. Uh, such are the desires of he who knew us and who gave himself for us. As there in the beginning, Jehovah God El Shaddai, without beginning or length of days, thought and considered well the scope of creation. And we live inside that now. We live and move and have our being within that, within the presence of God to that extent. Now, someday that will have a greater extent, and we shall see him as he is, and he'll be the light of that creation that surrounds us uh, from all directions at, at all times. But even right now, in this physical existence, we live and move and have our being within him, as Paul indeed witnessed upon Mars Hill there, as recounted in Acts chapter 17. So we're alive as the result of a choice. It was by his own will that he created us. As the creator presence of the Most High perceived that it was not good for man to dwell alone, uh, neither was it good for God to dwell alone in his thoughts just for all eternity. So God conceived of the blueprint of creation, drew it forth, measured it out, as Job chapter 38 shows us for, with the voice out of the whirlwind. Uh, he measured the universe and, and drew it all up, and then he built what had been conceived. And what was deliberated and what was thought upon was uh, so that we would have life, so that we would be, in all actuality, made alive. So here we are. That's why uh, I'm here. It's why you're here. Uh, there's, and there's no reason for existence out there at all, except that there is the hand of design behind all these things, as the universe was measured out by God in the beginning. For scripture reference, in our subject matter of choose this day, let's turn to Joshua chapter 24. Uh, 
The book is Joshua chapter 24, Joshua's signature statement upon the matter of choices. As in that generation, much trouble and throughout all generations, much trouble uh, uh, came about because of the advent of humankind and the freedom to turn uh, one way or the other. Uh, but you know what? God decided that we were worth it. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah for that. God decided we were worth the trouble. Like as Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 4 relates uh, in its, its wisdom, uh, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much strength comes by the, uh, much increase rather comes by the strength of the ox. Uh, God could have left the crib clean. He could have just left earth here, uh, swirling around on the spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy with no life upon it. And then there wouldn't be any pollution. There wouldn't be any trouble. There wouldn't be these, uh, the headlines we're accosted with every day. But life was worth it. Some things are just worth it. And it was worth it for God to love us and give himself for us even though humanity has made such a, a mess of things. But thereby we make our choices and decide what we uh, do about it by faith with the world that we're given today and by the strength of fellowship with us. And through those things, the Lord fulfills his royal purpose. So we glory in that. So, and at Joshua chapter 24, we'll read from the 14th verse and on down through the 18th verse. At the time of the exodus, as the children are coming out, Moses, my servant, is dead. And Joshua uh, takes them into the land amidst the backdrop of uh, all those things. At verse 14 of Joshua 24, Now therefore, fear the Lord. Now that's in the King James sense, in, in the best sense of the word, to have uh, awe-filled, reverent respect unto the Almighty and have gratitude for the giver of all spiritual blessings. So fear him and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. What's Joshua concerned with? He's concerned with a choice and he wants sincerity and truth because he's been well taught by Moses, the, the prophet, as they came out of Egypt, the land of oppression. He's well versed in all these things concerning that which is so very important. So what should Christians be? They should look to sincerity and truth always and seek those things and seek to find those things in their choices. All right, now verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that, ha he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and <clears throat> which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But of course, uh, in, in the uh, unfolding of history, stubbornness would show itself time and again, uh, whatever their protestations of belief were at that moment. So the, the struggle's been from Eden, it continues there, and it continues on to this day. But right in the here and now of this moment, choose whom you will serve. Make a choice, because you will serve one intent or another. Uh, it's uh, to not make a conscience choice, uh, a conscience uh, choice is apathy, or at, at, at the least it's a uh, a result of blind ignorance, but it's all too often uh, uh, not making a choice is just, it's apathetic, it's Laodicean. It was the great fault of the seventh church age as delivered at the end of Revelation chapter three, and that lukewarmness of spirit permeates our age. So, or the, uh, uh, this also, a uh, pollution just by falsity. Some people just don't love the truth. 
and uh, which is a, a brings death to us all. But this is the day of decision. Right now, this is the time we have. We don't have another time in this physical body, in this incarnation here upon earth. Now we're eternal beings, but as to our lifespan in this physical uh, world that we dwell in now, this is the only time that we do have to stand for these things and to make our choices. So this is our day to do exactly that and not just stand idly by. It's your calling. And the rewards that come with eternal life they are your crowns. As life demands choices, just a, of a necessity, it's laid out for us to see, most notably in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, but all the testifying scriptures that agree with that, they're, they're interspersed through, uh, throughout the length and breadth of the scriptures. But Ecclesiastes 3 is a good summation of, of all the choices that we have to make in our life. And Jesus underwent those, uh, being born in Bethlehem, raised in in Nazareth and uh, preaching uh, along the uh, the way in Judea and Samaria and through the synagogues of the day and, and so forth. Jesus experienced all these choices. So he, he did walk in our shoes and he felt so many of these things himself uh, the same way that we do. So we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for the rewards of our choices. Uh, don't be without your crowns or you won't have anything to lay at the master's feet as they're uh, depicted in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 10, in that day of the casting of the crowns. Yeah, your choices, they determine your spiritual credits as they give testimony as to who you are, as to what is in your heart. Uh, so you are very much what your confession makes you out to be. You are what you're saying, what you're saying, because... Uh, your spirit gives evidence by confession. So uh, it gives you a name. Your confession does. It gives you a name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And nothing else does except the, the faith that's within and being spoken and then done accordingly. Uh, these determine who we are for eternity. And thus we know we've passed from death into life. If we do these things and if we love the brethren, we not just fulfilling the letter of the law, but we do them to the intent that they were written. Well, uh, thank the Lord for those that do so. So follow his vision as it's outlined in scripture, not our own of a selfish nature. Uh, sin nature always has itself centered in, in some type of selfish uh, behavior. But these choices, they are set before us this day in order to build up the spiritual house. In Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, Read from the wisdom that was there before time began. Proverbs chapter 1 is there's a failure to perceive what's out there in the world today. And all too often it is a voluntary blindness that uh, focuses on the things of this world rather than that which is above. But when we read the scriptures, we get our eyes set on that which is above. And God in his infinite mercy has granted that right of choice to do those things to those that are of uh, faith. All right. Now, uh, in Proverbs chapter one, as a result of acts of faithlessness, uh, these things are written and they're very strong in their language. They're, there's a very definite admonishing tone to them. So we read them out of uh, Proverbs 1, verse 27. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. This puts us... A, when we do not choose the fear of the Lord, this just puts us in a state where what else is there? If, the, if mercy is not received, what's left? Judgment. So uh, these things uh, have to be adhered to. They have to be hearkened to. You have to put them in practice in your personal life uh, and, and not just make them just words uh, on a page. So having that spirit of the Lord within us to choose his fear at verse 30, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. We'll have an example of that that we'll speak to out of the book of Esther uh, in our next uh, verse reading. Verse 32 then. 
For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Or in other words, those are ease in their simplicities and do not make choices, but uh, just stand back and uh, don't do anything to help the situation by faith. All right, the turning away shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Uh, does that remind the, the, those examples that we read by scripture? Does that remind you of anything? Does it remind you of the end time? Does it remind you of the state of the world at the day of Armageddon, uh, the book of Revelation, those things that Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and, and Luke 21? It, it, it's foundational to those things. It will be that way. As the only good fear is fear of the Lord. And wisdom starts there, as written in this very chapter in the seventh verse. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's where it all starts. And this wisdom is crying out to be heard, even today. It seems so elemental and simple, and, and it is in a very real way, as we read it out of Proverbs but by no means is it listened to and abided by uh, in this world that we live within. This wisdom is crying out to be heard, the consequences of which must be made known to the despisers and haters of this world. And uh, verse 33, as we read it here, uh, as uh, the, these things, even with the admonishing tone and the picture that it draws, whoso hearkens to me, what do they have? They have peace of mind. They dwell safely uh, from fear of evil. It, 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 Peter said much the same thing. He said that in Acts 2.21 uh, concerning the days of the prophetic days of the sixth seal, that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's always the good news of the gospel for those that have an ear to hear such things. But these matters, that they were thought upon eons ago. They were deliberated within the thought process of the Holy One of, of Israel, the Ancient of Days, before the application of them was put forth here in, in writing, as we have just uh, recounted them. Bad choices, or even the non-choice of apathy, which is in itself a type of choice, uh, are the result of hatred, uh, from the result of a knowledge of evil which the devil sowed into the fabric of humanity uh, there in the Garden of Eden. And in your life, you will love and you will hate. You will do both of these things. So pray uh, uh, that we have the psalmic prayer of Psalms 119 and verse 104, which says, uh, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Hate the right things and hate them in the right way. So choose this day. As life itself, it becomes a matter of decision ultimately. So we have to listen to the prophetic voice. It's the testimony of Jesus. You can't throw uh, the Bible uh, uh, prophecies uh, just out the window and ignore them. It's the testimony of Christ himself. So uh, these things written within the Proverbs, these are the history of wisdom. It's why we came to be who we are right now. These are the very first thoughts of the Almighty God put to paper. It's the very beginning of morality, the establishing of spiritual sight, uh, the initial stages of, of thought that brought about our very existence. So listen to them. Listen to what the Spirit says, uh, that sevenfold injunction uh, in the message of the church ages in Revelation chapter 2 and, verse, and uh, chapter 3 uh, accordingly. Listen to what the Spirit, the Spirit is saying to those churches. And the ability to hear him is revelation itself. It's what the church is founded on. It's the Matthew 16, 18 principle put into life within our spirit. So we'll listen to those things, let them dwell therein, and God will make these things known to you. All right, now as promised, the book of Esther. Esther chapter 4. Now, I've used this reference uh, many times in our recent uh, past, within the last uh, four or five years especially. So just to recall these things to mind, if any uh, book was written to deliver one singular thought, uh, this is it. 
Uh, Esther chapter 4, we'll read from verse 13. As it speaks to this issue, do choices matter? Do they matter? Oh, they most certainly do. Not only for you yourself, but for those uh, surrounding you. And now here in uh, their day, in the days of Esther and her uncle Mordecai, persecution arises in the diaspora in Medo-Persia. You remember Israel was taken captive into Babylon. Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians, and thus uh, they find themselves uh, there uh, under the yoke of the Persian kings. But uh, choices come out of this, and spiritual lessons come out of all these trials and tribulations. So uh, once more to the well, here in, in Esther chapter 4, from verse 13, considering all these things, then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews, because persecution arose and, and uh, death was going to be the result of these things when you take in the whole uh, book and the situation that's uh, spoken to here. All right, verse 14. Now here comes the, the matter of choice. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Uh, what did Esther the queen do in the midst of her spirit? She sought the Lord. Fast, fast for me. Uh, three days. Does three days remind you of anything? We get, deliverance from death was after the, the third day as Christ arose from the tomb. And these patterns play themselves out within Scripture. God's heart and mind is here, and his mercy is here for each and every one. So here, uh, this woman took the matter to the Lord in prayer and in fasting. All right, the second part of the verse. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Because this was, uh, this is just something that you, you did not do. You did not go into the presence of the, uh, the king of Persia uh, without his uh, acknowledgement and without his invitation beforehand, uh, because it was a matter of life and death. But here, she says, I'm going to do this, and if, if death, my death is a result, well, so be it. Verse 17, so Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. So a very courageous woman made a very brave choice, but also a very enlightened one as she sought the Lord in prayer. Fast for these three days, I'll do it. You do it, pray for me, sought the Lord. And uh, sought the Lord at that time period and then came forth and risked her personal life for the sake of her people. Now, uh, greater love has no man or woman that would give of their life for others. And she made that choice. She noticed the affliction of her people via her uncle Mordecai here in chapter four, verse one. Uh, you read of, of some of these things. She made that choice, did uh, Esther, because a choice was set before her, a choice that threatened her life to come to the king unbidden. She risked her life for others. Greater love. It's right there. And uh, so there are so many lessons written within the fabric of the book of Esther, but choice being one of the greatest among them. Do our choices matter? They do, because that's Mordecai's words. Maybe you're set in place to make a choice like this right now and be an instrument of salvation. And there are other lessons written within too, uh, including uh, this one, that those who would build uh, the gallows to hang someone, uh, beware lest you end up at the end of your own rope, which did in fact it, it come to be in here in the book of Esther, as, as Haman did, uh, the enemy of uh, the sons of Abraham there in uh, Shushan of the Medo-Persian kingdom. And uh, the Jewish race, they would suffer many of these persecutions throughout their history. But deliverance will come. And as to the natural seed of Israel, 
read Romans chapter 11. It'll tell you everything that you need to know about God's plan for his own people. Read the first half of Revelation chapter 7 uh, to see how these things play themselves out prophetically. But uh, all things come as a result of choices, our blessings. And by choice, Esther put herself into a place where she could be used as a vessel of mercy. And what was, uh, there's two sides to that coin, because what was mercy to Israel was judgment upon Haman and his cohorts, uh, all the uh, enemies of uh, the people. But if she had chosen otherwise, well, then we would not even know her name. She'd be lost to history. But deliverance still would have come by some other way. That's where choices matter so much to us. She chose to be part of God's deliverance. And if not, well, deliverance, it would have arisen from some other place, as Mordecai did uh, attest to. And the queen would have been left out. So God will see it done by his word. It's up to us to choose our, our level of faith and how much we want to be a part of that. For he is Lord of all, and his word will be done. His word will not return to him void of its purpose. It will do that which is uh, which it has been set out to do. So you've got to be ready. She was ready. Uh, God bless her. She was ready to act at that moment. Here in our lives, to whatever uh, extent that we can, you have to be ready to act upon God's word and to do it now in order to be a good soldier of the cross. Let's turn to the book of Amos. A few scriptures to read in Amos chapter 9. Now some of these... Uh, uh, things that are, uh, might surprise you that are here in Amos chapter 9, but we want to take a, a good look at it. This reference uh, may puzzle a few that, uh, as to its relationship uh, to our subject, but it will in illustrate the principle of what choices do, either the choices made from on high or our own choices. Uh, they include whether God's will will be done or, or whether uh, we become part of that or whether we're uh, excluded, which is, of course, very much the uh, essence of Esther 4.14. So uh, here is an amazing fact from uh, the scriptures. There was more than one exodus in place to fulfill all scripture. Now, that may seem strange and surprising, but we're going to read it here out of Amos chapter 9 because God prepares for things. God makes contingency plans and he will order the course of future events in order to make it all work out in the end. But choices are accorded to us. We have to be part of that or we can choose otherwise. And that will show out of Amos chapter 9 and verse 5. And we read, And the Lord God of hosts is he that toucheth the land and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn as this is said against the backdrop of all the pronouncements of that day of the t this is approximately 800 years before the coming of christ and the uh, the middle days of the uh, israelite monarchy in judah and and uh, in israel samaria of israel and jerusalem of judah uh, those pronouncements made against damascus and edom and moab uh, in the struggles of that of, of that day so the uh, God's judgments, they are pronounced here, but remember, mercy is always greater, and mercy always rejoices against judgment. All right, second part of the verse, and it shall rise up wholly like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. Uh, a reference to uh, the Exodus days of, of the flood uh, that... Uh, trapped Pharaoh and his legions there in, in the midst of, of the Red Sea. All right, verse 6. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven and hath founded, founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth, the Lord in his, is his name. All right, verse 7. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Uh, in other words, you're, you're just like everybody else. I've set my love upon you because of a promise to Abraham and so forth. But don't think that uh, you're holy in and of yourself. All nations of the world have sin nature to them, and the seed of the serpent has a, 
uh, a profound effect on things. So don't think you're very different, but you're special in that you were chosen, but don't get too enamored of that fact. It's not because of you. You're like everybody else, including uh, the Ethiopians. All right. Then saith the Lord, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt? which of course is a reference to the Exodus that we all are, are very aware of and, and uh, know of by the account of the book of Exodus and, and Moses and the deliverance from Egypt. But that was not the only Exodus because it says, and the Philistines from Kaftor and the Syrians from Kerr. There were two other Exodus peoples and they could have been part of this gospel. Uh, part of the Philistines, part of the sea peoples from the island of Crete, which is in the King James Version is called Kaftor, and the Syrians from Kerr uh, on the eastern end of the Fertile Crescent and the land of the Assyrian uh, Empire of that time and so forth. God brought these up also. All right, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. So amongst those people brought up, there were actually three Exodus peoples. And Israel, through Abraham and deliverance through Moses, were the ones that God used in the final analysis against all, all these things. So uh, Israel wasn't so much different than anybody else. Now, in, in the fact of choices, uh, this, this astounds me, uh, that the course of history can be changed. It could have been these, if one of these nations had had an Esther or a Moses, and perhaps they did, but they weren't listened to, and so their names are unknown to us uh, from history, but they were there in place. God brought them up in order to fulfill his will, but in the course of time through events that uh, we're not completely aware of, but in general terms, uh, they rejected that calling as God brought them up. So in the course of history, God sets plans and events and pronouncements uh, of God uh, that come forth. Uh, the altering of history, it can be changed. But yet God sees. He sees the results of these things because he's unfettered by uh, time. But choice and matter, uh, they matter. Choices matter greatly, and uh, they have to be looked at in that way. These people, they made choices uh, that turned away from the Most High God. And uh, there were uh, other notable Gentile factions, shall we say, uh, within Scripture. Remember Balaam? Uh, he was a prophet of the Almighty, but he chose the, the riches of reward rather than to uh, go by the word of the, the Most High. Uh, Job was a, a Gentile influence. He wasn't the seed of Abraham. Book of Job was Gentile. The last two chapters of the book of Proverbs were written by Gentile uh, sources. So uh, there, were, there were others besides Israel. But God did choose Abraham and did choose Israel to bring his word forth. But there were other peoples in place that could have been part of that but they chose not to. So what Joshua said, choose this day, whose gods are you gonna serve? In general terms, they served other gods and some of that's recorded within scriptures. But they were there, they, they had a chance. Choices matter. And the, so the Hebrew children were not the only ones uh, brought up, brought up to the land that God cares for, where his eyes are upon it constantly as we're told in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 12. There were others set in place, but the tribes of uh, Jacob and Israel, uh, they would receive the commandments of the Lord. And, and even in their case, it was a, a very near thing. As you remember from Exodus 32, uh, the, the account of Moses, how he interceded on behalf of the people. And it almost, because God was gonna take them away right there, and it, it would have went through Moses' line of uh, descendancy in order to bring these things about. Uh, but Moses made a choice and interceded, and God honored that. Moses put up a, a good argument, and it was faithful, and it, it pleased the Lord, and so he withheld his uh, hand. And, and, and these other peoples mentioned of here in Amos chapter 9, these Philistines, of course, were so reviled. 
by the, ta- by the time of Saul and David. If they would have turned aside from their ways, it could have been different for them. See how choices matter and how they matter greatly. Same for the Syrian nation. It could have been them or they could have been part of it. But somewhere along the way, they stumbled. And if there was an equivalent to Moses among them, uh, they did not hearken uh, like Balaam of old. Uh, But uh, enlargement and deliverance, it did come. It did come uh, to those that made a faithful choice and it came through the nation of Israel and God's mercy was upon them. St. John, St. John chapter 15. God has given us freedom of will in order to choose him. So choose this day who you will serve, but you will serve one purpose or another. Those things are inevitable. So John chapter 15, as we'll look to the words that Jesus said in in this regard, and as it turns out in the ancient example, uh, Balaam's mule uh, knew more about God's presence than the prophet did. Uh, So thus he's uh, given the, uh, the place in scripture that he is. He could have been himself a type of Moses, but instead he became an opponent of uh, the Exodus generation. He had a choice uh, in the New Testament times, so did Judas Iscariot. He was chosen, he was one of the 12, uh, but he turned aside from that. Choices matter, they matter greatly. So choose wisely, lest you be found in opposition to, to the Lord himself. Here then, in St. John chapter 15, let's start from verse 16. Now as to God's choosing, and his mercy, and how that comes. We thank the Lord we can accept it, but it was his gift. So, in verse 16 of John chapter 15, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go forth, should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you do, if it's done in the Lord's will, and in the right content and intent of his spirit, that it remains eternal, that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Lord, ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. It's, it's so vital. It just has to be done. At the midweek service, I put an emphasis point on the last six commandments of the Ten Commandments, because this is how we evidence God's love within our spirit. There by command, but by love all these things should dwell in our hearts as so spoken by the master here so it's his commandment from above that ye love one another because that's the way to beat deception Uh, we don't uh, you can't beat the devil by your wisdom he's wiser than daniel as ezekiel said of him once not in praise but he just did not underestimate the wiles of uh, the enemy so uh, uh, not by any uh, faculties of our own native intelligence uh, do we uh, escape the, the, the traps of the enemy? That's uh, by love. You have to stick to those things. It has to become part of you. All right, verse 18. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Uh, this portion of scripture is so vital to our outlook on life. Uh, I use it mo- most recently in uh, God Who Commands, uh, that series of, of title lessons uh, just uh, that came forth you know, in the last few weeks. But you just can't, you can't wear out inspiration like this. It's from above. We always need reinforcement by the scriptures. So when did God choose us? before the foundations of the world. That should put hope within each and every heart. And you have to consider all things possible, excuse me, in this practice of faith. But within that, uh, we make choices. We choose to either accept or reject uh, the Almighty God, just as the, the Philistine nation and the Syrians, at some point in their national history, They rejected the things of Almighty God, even though he'd brought them out. They had a chance to be part of it, as Amos 9 tells us. But uh, they rejected it. But thank God for that there was a nation that would receive him. And from beginning to end, 
from A to Z, from Alpha and Omega, from Genesis to Revelation, world without end, God is there in the miraculous, in, in our choices, in his choices by his divine will that give inspiration of us so we know how to make our decisions uh, through the things that we read about and those miracles. Miracles are which are from the very beginning and they just never stop. And in this life, you won't get a great deal of credit uh, in this world. The, the world, the collective wisdom of, and uh, nature of this world doesn't love God. It's far from it. Uh, you won't get a great deal of credit in this world. Don't, don't expect it. It's not what the world's made out of, uh, to give credit to beings of such spiritual stock. So uh, don't, don't expect those things. Uh, the collective will of this world, of uh, the flesh and the devil, is uh, the effect of uh, their nature is to minimalize those called. And, and truly, uh, all have fallen short of the glory of God, but thank the Lord for his mercy, which lives us up by his blood's atoning work. Because when you have that, you will get credit with a name written in heaven. So expect that. Make that your most earnest expectations and you will never be disappointed. And these decisions that we make, they most indeed, uh, indeed certainly are about worship, as love and truth are the uh, greatest choices you will ever make, and there's no higher calling. There's no greater purpose to serve. The most important thing you'll ever do with your life, no matter who you are, whatever you achieve scholastically or or in business, or by way of fame, or, or if it even rises to the level of stardom as the world uh, accounts it, you'll never do anything greater than to be part of the greatest thing that's ever been from the beginning of time, and to be part of these scriptures. And whoever uh, rejects that, you're throwing away your own reward. So put your hope in eternal things. And if one turns away, makes a choice to turn away, as thankfully Esther the queen did not do. But if one does turn away, well then enlargement of blessing and, and deliverance, that'll come by some other way, some other person or some other nation as it could have been for uh, the Syrian nation or the Philistine nation. But don't be left out. Make a choice for Christ. Make it your spiritual calling card and you'll never be disappointed. Let's turn to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, as you can't obtain inheritance without hearing call of the master's voice. And how does one prove that out? By becoming a follower and doer of the word, as your predestination election is verified by the result of belief. Uh, in the Reformation era, and in some circles even to this day, uh, there exists a school of thought that says that no one can uh, know of their own predestination as to salvation. Now, if that was true, uh, how could salvation become fully assured by a confession formula found in Romans chapter 10, uh, verses in 9 and 10, Romans 10, uh, 13? You choose your own standing in Christ. Now, the office of it, it's not everyone that is, uh, holds the five-fold ministry titles, but we all can be in service to one another, and you can choose to do that. You can choose to uh, serve him by the grace that he gives us. So predestination simply involves the seeing ahead of the Lord God who knows no boundaries of time. He sees these things. He sees what he sees. God cannot be less than what he is. He's an eternal, timeless being. And he sees things from an eternal vantage point always. And whosoever believeth on him shall never be ashamed. Now that's where our spiritual sight puts us. In that day when souls are required to give account of themselves, thank the Lord, we need not be ashamed. If we accept his blood, accept the atoning work, if that's our choice, then whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, even if it's, even if it's right in the middle of the judgment day. So these are things that really matter. Your choices matter. They matter very much. And all else except making a choice for Christ, it's all vanity. Uh, like the preacher, proclaimer of Ecclesiastes said, it's all va vanity. It's useless. These things are, are what matters. Even if I've established a kingdom and I have so many servants and I've built 
uh, these mighty works and, and you know the uh, the places to dwell in and the city walls and the castles thereof it's all useless but the word of the Lord is eternal and it's what really matters saith the preacher and so saith the Lord of hosts now here in Luke chapter 6 from verse 47 and we'll read down to verse 49 which ends out uh, the chapter what's the what's the best way to be a part of the big picture the prophetic work just take care of your own soul it's the most vital thing there is it's a pearl of great price you give everything that you have to obtain it it's that darling uh, that term of endearment found within psalms uh, chapter 22 and verse 20 uh, a term of endearment for your very own soul it's the most precious thing you have gold silver possessions uh, cars, uh, uh, businesses, and all these, those are not your most prized possessions. Your most prized possession by far is the soul that is within. So hear what the Spirit says to that soul. And hear this from Luke chapter 6 and from verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. The hearings of these sayings, it requires faith to prove itself out by the doing uh, thereof. And that, that, of course, is a choice. Uh, the wisdom within the master has shown us what such decisions, what they do. They build upon the foundation. And what else will stand? What else will stand except the rock of ages, which is cleft for me? As Christianity always was and, and always will be about the death of uh, the old man, symbolically speaking, and the birth of the new, to bury the past and to rise up to meet the challenges of the future. As old things are gone and all things are made new in Christ. And in this faith, you don't have to be defined by your past. Your new identity, it, that's gone. it's buried, it's dead with Christ. It's buried with him by, by the act of baptism, symbolic of the uh, the burial of Christ and the rising up thereof. Your new identity is based rather upon not what you did in the past, but it's upon who you are eternally by the strength of your choices. And God would that all would come to him for life. And blessed are those who do so in Jesus' name. Let's conclude in prayer. Father, we do thank you for your words of mercy and grace. We thank you, Father, that we have a choice set before us and that we can choose this day to serve you in spirit and truth, remembering all those that are in need of prayer and for any illnesses and afflictions of this world. Lord, just give us strength to make it through as we know that you will do, Father, giving us all abilities through our deliverance portion that comes from above. Father, we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank the Lord. God bless each and every one, and may the planted seed, may it bring forth the bountiful increase in Jesus' name.